Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to The Dirt Drive. My name is Tim Germario. Uh, this week, we are joined by Trevor Clark and Tom Sylvester. It's usually going to be the three of us on the podcast talking about anything and everything off-road. This week, we sit down and we just introduce ourselves, talk about who we are, where we come from. We'll be doing this every week, planning on releasing on Tuesdays, so make sure you join us. You guys can also follow us on social media at The Dirt Drive, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We're actually going to be doing video podcasts starting very soon as well, posted to YouTube. We're, we're pretty excited to be bringing it to you. That's all I got for you right now, so here we go. Enjoy the episode. Yeah, I started uh, building Legos, I think like everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor, did you start with Legos, I bet? Were you not a Lego guy? No, I was absolutely a Lego okay. guy. Yeah, I think I think everyone who plays with Jeeps started as a Lego guy. Yeah. And then uh, my dad's CJ. Yeah, um, how many times did you blow that up? Four. And then, mm. yeah. Mm. That, was, see that, that was son. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> CJ, we, re- we, we rebuilt that when I was, or we sent it to paint when I was eight years old. So we tore it all down to the body. I mean, I was going to say doors, but we took the roll cage out. We took the, the seats out. We sent it on a roll back to the paint shop. Turns out it was a shitty paint shop. It went to like Mako or something. The Mako Mistako. Mako Mistako. Uh, Gotta love it. Um, but then we f***ed around with dirt bikes and shit. Uh, <laughs> gotta watch the language, dude. It's fair. Okay. <laughs> we messed around with dirt bikes and shit. <laughs> God, <laughs> God damn it. I guess I can't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm just saying, the... The worse you are, the more editing you're going to have to do. So, Fair. like, think of it as the better you talk and not saying dumb things and, um, and I, uh, mm, uh, and, uh, and, and God damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the less so work you have to put in. Dirt bikes. Playing around with dirt bikes for forever. Actually, I sold my dirt bikes to buy my, my Cherokee. Trevor was there for that one. Yep. Yep, I was. Um, then after the dirt bikes, I I drove the CJ as my first car. Uh, kind of, I never really did any off roading with it because I was afraid of it because <laughs> my dad told me the axles were gonna fall out of it. <laughs> but probably because they were. But no, we we built it when I was like eight years old, and it had only been like, I guess ten years. No, eight years till I was sixteen nice. and driving it every day. Two. So it was good. It was good. I just never thought about it. And he said, "Don't take it off road." I was like. Yeah, got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And that yeah. was the last time you listened to your dad. I think that was probably more about you as a uh, 16-year-old driver than it was the probably. condition of the Jeep. He just used the Jeep to yeah. scare you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we we uh, rode dirt bikes around Ashburn, where the AOL the is. Rattlers. Yeah. All the data centers are all yeah. where I used to ride dirt bikes. For um, you younger local listeners, Ashburn used to be farms. Yep. Used to be. Yeah. Used to be a lot of farms. And now it's just data farm. Yeah, where where it's where farms. there's probably about twenty five thirty data centers. We used to ride dirt bikes, drive jeeps, and there was a hobbyist RC club that flew out of there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was pretty. So we'd be there bombing up and down hills in the jeep, and I'd be ripping on the dirt bike, and there'd just be like old P fifty one Mustang, uh, uh, like model airplanes, model airplanes flying around. So yeah, that was that was cool to watch. Then I couldn't ride dirt bikes anymore because everything got sold, and uh, no more dirt bikes in Ashburn, which means no more. There was no more real jeeping in Ashburn for me. Yeah, except for that uh, that one little spot we went to. Um, oh, with Quist. Yeah, that was <coughs> not posted at the time. Correct. Because <laughs> we've never done anything illegal. No. Um, but yeah, that was that was a fun little. Quick little jaunt through the woods. So, then the Camaro came along when I was thirteen. I built built on that, played with that for forever. I've still got that car. It's sitting in uh, my fiance's mom's barn. I was gonna say it's not done yet. In so. pieces. <laughs> Currently mid as LS swap. As we sit here staring at my Jeep. Yeah, we're uh, in we're pieces. in Tom's garage. As mine is currently in pieces at the shop. <laughs> yeah. So sensing a theme. <laughs> Once I blew up, don't the ever Jeep. start projects, children. It just gets you no, in no, trouble. No, no, you always start them. You just you never you just don't finish, finish them. them. Just like my axles on the side of your house. <laughs> yeah, don't tell my wife. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, then the Jeep. I was driving that Jeep every day. 
turned 18, I bought my first car, which is a 2004 Chevy Silverado 1500. Put a leveling kit on it. Good old Bruce. Drove it for, I actually got it paid off, so I drove it for five years before I took it to the woods. Because everyone gave me a hard time. Because I was destroyed that poor truck. Because I was the such, Ashburn, Ashburn redneck with a nice truck, and I never a, took it off road. Such a, it's, I'm so sorry, Bruce. R.I.P. Hey, it's how we're here. R.I.P. Bruce. You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. If if anything, Bruce sacrificed his life to bring the dirt nerds together. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know it at the time. No, no, but no, no retrospectively, yeah. in his mind, his sacrifice yeah. was very much in vain. <laughs> Everyone at the firehouse gave me a hard time because I had that nice truck with 35-inch tires nope. and I never, never drove it off-road. Nope. So then I met uh, Wally mm-hmm. at a uh, Cars and Coffee in uh, South Riding. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because that's over where I used to live. Yeah. So he told me a bit about Big Dogs, and that's the first trip where I met you guys. Yeah, me and Tom Walk, yeah. Beat the crap out of my truck for three Big Dogs events. Yeah. Yeah, because first one... Let's see. What did what did you do the first event? You clipped your bed twice, backed into a tree, two tie rods, while drunk, going to get pizza. <laughs> that was two, awesome. Two tie rods, one at the playground, one going up to high road. And I was not smart enough after I broke the first one to buy a spare. I just <laughs> went to the parts store and replaced one of them and didn't yep. buy a spare. Yep. Because at the playground, you bumped it a little too hard. Tim. No, yeah. no, God forbid. Never. Yeah. And then uh, Bruce uh, had to take a little tinkle. Yeah, towed in. <laughs> that picture is floating around somewhere. <laughs> Both pictures are floating around somewhere because... One day when this is on YouTube, that will, will cut to that picture. Yeah. yeah. Cause Insert we, picture here. When he, when he did it going up to High Road, it was walk... That was the next trip. That was when I broke a CV axle that trip. Yeah. When we had Petrie with us. Yeah, because walk winch to you, and then we tied walk to me. And then tied me to Woody and put Woody in gear so that Bruce wouldn't slide down the hill. Yeah, Woody Woody was a savior that first trip because <laughs> he took me to the parts store twice to get the uh, tie rods. Which is funny because Karma repaid itself when his brakes went out and he yeah. smashed into the tree. We had to fix his and we had to fix his brakes on the side of the mountain. It's a good so. thing we we brought Bam Bam around, it made Tim look like a good driver. Yeah, no sh- yeah, because he. Broke how many windows? Ripped all three of his light bars off. Not me, Bam Bam. Yeah, 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 yeah Bam Bam. Let's clarify. Yes, I've never broken glass. Knock on no, wood. No. Yeah, it's like my only goal Bam every Bam trip. Out three windows. Yeah, that yeah. trip. And was on fire. Yeah. Yep, and back, had coming to, back from the playground. Had to, yeah. had to, oh, that was a different trip. And it, and his front. No, I think the, the excursion was only at one big dogs. Yeah. One big dogs. Yeah, the and, other, and the other all trip of that we, was in one big dogs. Oh, so yeah, both right. trips, the excursion came on it, caught on fire. Right, because Pizza at big dogs, <laughs> he blew his front diff up and was on fire right. traveling back from the playground yeah. to camp. And then obviously at AOAA, when he caught fire, and we had to drag him out backwards for five miles That's back cool. to the parking lot. That was when yeah. he didn't know he had a trans leak and it pumped all the transmission fluid out on caught his trailer because he drove from New Jersey to AOAA with it idling to charge the battery. <laughs> Yeah. I, lo- I love our friends. <laughs> we have special friends. Um, so, yeah, back to the truck. I, I beat the truck up so much. I s- uh, sold a dirt bike, my last dirt bike. I sold that to buy the Cherokee and Stink Luckett's. Bug. Bought it in Luckett's for That's 700 right. It was in Luckett's. $750. You yeah. remember the, the good old days. The, the 50 because it was a brand new battery that he had just put in, and he wanted to recoup some of the cost of it. So the Jeep was 700 If we wanted it with the battery, it was yeah, It's a good price for a battery. That's a yeah. Good, that is a good price it's, for a battery. You're <laughs> not wrong. But that was after we diagnosed that it didn't actually have a trans issue. It just needed trans fluid. Yeah, it's a Chrysler. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I put, tra- I put trans fluid He was it. a home mechanic, so he knew what he was talking about. Yeah. And how did we test that? <laughs> we put it in gear and just let it drive down the road by itself. Yep. Did the ghost walk before that was a thing? <laughs> or ghost ride the whip before it was a yeah. thing? <laughs> and then uh, put some farm tags on it, and I drove Bruce back to your house. You did. He, with you behind me, and we passed four police officers. We did. There was a checkpoint, and I had farm tags on it driving into Ashburn. <laughs> Still not as good as the time when we bought the Chief. Oh, my gosh. That was we'll such get, a we'll great get to that. Yeah. Uh, so... Your good old stink bug. Beat, Still around. Beat that up a little bit. Then I realized I'd like to be able to get home. So I bought a trailer, uh, which led to a new truck 
mm-hmm. a 14 Silverado. Bruce 2. Bruce 2. Which didn't last very long. Lasted no, a lot a, less time it, it, than it, Bruce. I put a transmission in it, and I decided it was time to get rid of it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's what it was. 6 l 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then I was truckless for a while. I had a trailer, a Jeep, and no truck. Yep. And then I bought my current diesel, and we, we are where we are today. And why is it called Stinkbug? Stinkbug, because we took the headliner down. Was Tom Walk there for that? No, it was just me and you at the house. Took the headliner down. It was about a thousand stink bugs came out of the ceiling. <laughs> it was disgusting. It was terrible. It was terrible. I'm more amazed that it didn't smell. Yeah. They had been in there a while. Yeah. All dead. I think they were all dead. Yes. Yeah, they were all dead. Luckily. Thankfully. It's because that thing sat for like two years before you got it, I think. Well, yeah, because he was trying to give it to his daughter, and then she didn't want it because it was an XJ. And it wouldn't go in, wouldn't drive. Yeah, wouldn't drive. Because it needed a new trains. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Luck is a deal. Right now. We bought some good, good, less than oh, $1,000 Cherokees. We had, a, we had a really good run there for a while. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we had Erica's, we had yep. yours, and then there My was brothers. Scrap Heap. Yeah, Scrap Heap. Scrap and Kings. Wills. Kings. Yeah, we had five or six in there. Oh, we got were, we just got Habib's. What do we need for that? Uh, Habib's, we didn't make a brake line, but Habib's. Oh, was oh the, the one bucks. that I rebuilt when I was a kid, and I did put like three twists in it. <laughs> Probably, it's it's rotted out now. Habib's was what fifteen hundred thirteen. I think it was That's less not than bad. That. Thirteen. I don't, I don't you know what to pay Shift for. lever and a brake line. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, well, yeah, my my origin story is kind of the opposite. <laughs> uh, I. Grew up in New Jersey, and oh, yeah, that's why I left. <laughs> smells like dirty water and cigarettes. <laughs> the whole state. It, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it smells like diners and dirty water and cigarettes. Which, first of all, diners are delicious. I'm not saying delicious. they're not. And I will, I will give that Jersey has some of the best bagels and some of no, the, no, the best bagels. Dude, not, the, where, where have you had? Manhattan. Okay. That doesn't count. Oh, an isol- it's an that? isolated incident. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, the ones we had at Walsh's wedding were really and, good. And, yeah, and, and that was, that's New Jersey. And, and that was just like a special shout there. out to Seagulls in Las Vegas. Yes, because yes. best bagel outside east. of New Jersey, east of the Mississippi. West, west, west. west of sorry, west, west. <laughs> I thought you said west. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, grown up, played with Legos, connects, all the <laughs> the usual usual things, and uh, my. Uh, didn't have much of a technical background and went to high school, started out as a Votech auto mechanic kid, fell in love with cars, um, was offered an XJ for free when oh. I was 15 years old. That's a good deal on an XJ. Uh, it was a great deal in my mind at 15. However, <laughs> it was still an XJ. Looking back, <laughs> I realized why it was free. Uh, it, it had been attempted to, had been stolen uh, was not stolen, came with a title, but there was no ignition. You doing all right, Trevor? No, no door locks. Uh, it's it's allergy season around here. Uh, no door locks. It was completely rotted out. And naturally, the first thing I did as a 15-year-old kid was... Lift it, t- put bigger tires on it. Bingo. <laughs> hauled that bad boy right to the school shop, put it on the lift... I remember my instructor going, this thing's a death trap. And I was like, already bought the lift kit. <laughs> and uh, working through auto tech classes, put a lift kit, wheels, tires on it. School ended. I still didn't have a driver's license. So naturally, my father, who love him to death, doesn't really hang pictures on the wall level. <laughs> has to drive this rusty, rusty, crusty, just, I mean, for lack of a better term, shit box. Like, just the worst shit of box them. for life, man. And I love it driving it the five minutes from the high school to my house my dad claims we almost died three times was that the first time you experienced death wobble no 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 well maybe i don't know i was 16 i didn't know any better yeah he he claims exaggerating he claims the brakes went out okay it was a manual i think he just you know hit the wrong wrong button but i was wrong (laughs) i was nice enough that i had put a muffler on it before we left Mm. because you know responsible 16 year old didn't peel the stickers off, so we get to the house. My mom thinks the Jeep's on fire. My dad freaks out. <laughs> Jeep wasn't on fire, but, you know, it was a learning process for all of us. So fast forward about a month later. Still a learning process for your parents. Uh, I try and teach myself how to drive stick. Oh, that's always how it goes well. And uh, Although I did that at CarMax, so it's fine. A U-joint explodes. Oh, oh. 
And now my XJ is sitting in the driveway with no drive shaft, <laughs> working at a gas station. My dad's like, you need to talk to Matt. Shout out to Yorktown Shell, York, Manalpa, New Jersey. Comes, hooks the piece of shit up, hauls out of my driveway. My dad never been happier. <laughs> hauls it up to the, <laughs> hauls it up to the gas station, puts on the lift, looks me square in the eye and says, you can't drive this. I was like, why not? I'm going to fix it. He goes, you're missing one and a half motor mounts. You've got no rockers, no floors. Oof. The fact that the axles are still in this thing while it's in the air is a miracle. We shouldn't be standing under it. Yikes. So I'm like, well, man, I just spent like $400 on a lift kit. Like, because, you know, back shout when lift space, kits were spacer, $400. Spacers, shout out, spacers and Adelies. Shout out to Rough Country. <laughs> uh, super lift. Oh, nice. Oh, so you even, had, you even had a uh, taste then. Yeah. Um, uh, and <laughs> and I was like, all right. Well, he's like, I'll tell you what. I got a 96 XJ that we just got on Mechanics Lean in the back. Sell it to you for three grand. And I'm like, I can't afford I don't that. Have three grand. He goes, you can work it off this summer. So I ended up working off an XJ. Settled on 2300 because, you know, he was a nice guy. Like so that. your first Cherokee was two Cherokees. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, over the next, like, month and a half working nights at the gas station, transferred the lift kit from the rusty ship box to the very nice white manual XJ had like 180,000 on it, but brand new battery four Oh, all the gasket. I mean, wonderful Jeep daily drove that thing all senior year, high school speedo only hit 80, 85, 85. Uh, was that when you were in your boy band with Wookie? Yeah, I was in my boy band. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. Later. And that XJ came in handy. Cause we would load that thing up. Well, of course, go to all of our shows. You couldn't put it in Wookie's Honda. No, no. That 95 Accord had seen much better days. Powder blue on powder blue 95 Honda Accord. I, we had we had the fleet in high school, man. We were we were killing it. Dude, I'm going to have to slap Wookie for that one. Uh, pretty, it was a that's, hand-me-down. That's pretty sweet. That We'll save it for another podcast when he's on as a guest. Oh, but yeah. that car has a phenomenal death story. <laughs> and when yeah. I said, did oh, Hector swap and, a spoon and, into and it? There, and if there's anything, <laughs> pretty much, if, if there's anything that New Jersey group likes to do, it's kill vehicles in spectacular fashion. Oh, but that's the best part. We are not the ones that killed it. Oh, that's why the story is fantastic. We'll, we'll get to that yeah. another time. Yeah, another <laughs> another episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Shameless plug. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so second XJ. I put like probably 50,000 miles on that thing in a year. Took it to college. Shocker. Drove it back and forth from Pennsylvania to New Jersey every other weekend. Mm -hmm. Just drove the wheels off of that thing. I'm in school, collision repair. Some nutty redneck kid in my paint class is like, oh my God, you have a manual XJ? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's a turd. And he's like, I'll give you fifteen hundred bucks for it, and I was like, "Sold, done, nice." Because <laughs> I had that cost. I had run the driver's side down a couple of trees at least twice. <laughs> you, yeah, no. mismatched doors, you they, know, spray painted they white. Do, they do West Virginia <laughs> pinstripes in New Jersey. Uh, well, some of them were in Pennsylvania, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's a ring to it too. Pennsylvania pinstripe. Yeah, it does. It does. It's got that alliteration. Much better. Yeah. Uh, so that that started my my car journey. Kind of got into the tuner mm -hmm. world a little bit. Not my proudest days, but yeah, know, tuners are cool. Man. It happens, yeah. Well, yeah, but see, you had. You I, had, I was young. Speed you was cool. All of a sudden, BMWs. Though. You had the. Old I did. School yeah. BMWs. Yeah. 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 I've, I've always been an old school, school car bullshit. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not into the flashy, no. modern stuff. If it, it it's got to leak oil, it's got to be difficult to drive. No air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, One of my BMWs thing, had no take, heat. You used to say that thing uh, took S turns like nobody's business. Oh yeah, so. you put your foot on your on the floor and do 105 miles an hour. In any direction. Ask him how he knows. I, I would never. Speed limits only. We don't break the law. No, no. We, uh, we, we travel two miles under the speed limit just to ensure we are uh, not breaking the law. But then after college, went out to Colorado, lived in western Colorado for a couple of years, and it's kind of where I got back into off-roading. Had a Nissan Frontier. Mm -hmm. Used to take dirt trails from where I lived out into Moab. You know, got way You could see it from the resort. Uh, not Ish. see it, but yeah, it was, it was either a seven hour drive by highway cause you had to go all the way east, north, then west and then south, or you could just go 25 miles down a dirt road and you're in Moab. Or it was an hour paragliding adventure. Yeah. Um, God, I can't, I can't wait till we go out there. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> moved back east, ended up in Virginia. Where? Yeah. 
in Hoodbridge. Oh, yeah, that doesn't really, that's not relevant. <laughs> um, to our local listeners, yeah. it will be. <laughs> Got back into the car world because I didn't have friends that off-roaded, and uh, I was living in the D.C. metro area. I was like, off-roading doesn't exist. <laughs> And fast forward a few more years, end up at the firehouse, meet Tim, and realize that uh, off-roading is actually a thing, and it is huge out here. Mm -hmm. Huge. So after... Much more technical. Yeah. After convincing Tim that I wasn't going to wheel my 2013 Grand Cherokee that was my daily driver, Ah, I decided I'm going to buy a trail rig. Sarah appreciates that. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, (laughs) that car still kicking. Yeah, that was the lawnmower. That doesn't count. <laughs> and uh, we, sc- you know, scrolling. Fa- what, was that a Craigslist buy? I think it was Facebook. It was, it was either it was either one was of my first Facebooks or one of my last Craigslist buys. I think it was Facebook. I can't remember. Either way, find this. Clapped out. I, I was going to say beautiful. The pictures made it look fantastic. <laughs> Just this wonderful 76 Cherokee Chief. Mm. Already lifted. R.I.P. Chief. Yeah, had 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 a sweet Snap-on Edition 360 V8 That's in it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Lime green heads. Pretty sure the previous owner's name was Kyle. <laughs> Monster and stickers everywhere. <laughs> Mon- Snap-on yeah. stickers on Monster the Monster Snap-on Monster. stickers. <laughs> um, I forgot about the Snap-on head. We uh, we go and we look at this thing. Guy was asking like some ridiculous number. I, was yeah. like, I think he wanted like eighteen hundred dollars or something. And it was me, Tim, Tom Walk. Mm-hmm. And I messed it up for you. It, well, it's, the guy's like, yeah, it doesn't really run well and all this. And we're tinkering with it, trying to figure out how we're going to get it home. And, oh, let me guess. Tim got it to run. Uh, with a couple zip ties. Yeah. You. So all mm. of a sudden it's idling. And I'm like, oh, shit, now I can test drive it. So we go drive around the block. I'm like, all right, it's, it's running. It's driving. Trail rig. Trail rig. Like, send it. Needs tires. Talk the guy down to like 1100 bucks or something. Yeah. Um, literally left the house, went to the bank, got cash, bought it. Realized that Tim and Tom drove a Tim's excuse me Tim's truck. I think we were in Tom's Jeep. Maybe it was Tom's Jeep, yeah, I think which we were in Tom's was Jeep. usually a death trap. You guys drove together. I was leaving my day job working for Dent Wizard, and I was in my mm. wheel repair truck, which mm. is a massive box truck. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I realized nobody else can drive the Dent Wizard truck, and somebody's got to drive my shit box. Oh, home. I was driving the shit box, wasn't I? Yeah. Yep. So I forgot that part. If uh, if you're listening and you're in Northern Virginia, uh, we purchased this in Great Falls of all places. Oh, I didn't realize it was there. Yeah, right off of uh, Baron Cameron Boulevard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On, off seven, mm-hmm. and uh, we decide. That's a ways. Yeah, we're, we're yeah we're, we decide we're gonna we're gonna drive this thing back to Lovettsville down because, seven. Yeah, because, at rush hour, <laughs> five thirty at night because roadkill. Yeah. And uh, for all the local yeah. listeners who understand, that is a terrible idea. Uh, yeah, if you know anything about DC Metro rush hour and this is pre-covid rush hour this isn't like our new rush hour that's not really rush yeah. hour this is this is pre-covid this is We're, three hours oh, yeah it was, it was it was rush afternoon yeah started at 2 30 uh and and we decide we're gonna drive this thing so naturally we hit the highway or caravanning no license plates Dent was her truck leading because if you're gonna rear end it, it might as well be the company vehicle <laughs> <laughs> if the brakes are gonna go out and this thing Shuts off what three, four times? Oh yeah, on a mm-hmm. section of Route Seven that is a divided two lane highway with, with barriers no, up, with no median, just guardrail on on both sides. <laughs> well, no, those were concrete like Jersey barriers. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, guardrails, Jersey barriers, whatever you want to call I them. Totally forgot about all of yeah. this. So we're in a panic. We're in the middle of the highway. Traffic is just horrendous. And we're under the hood of this thing in the dark in a lane. We couldn't in get a off lane, the road. We were trying to figure lane. out how to make it run, and we determined. <laughs> At some point, the coil died in the five minutes we were driving it. So now we get it hooked up. Tom has a tow strap, you know, thanks to Tech Rescue Tom. (laughs) He opens up his Jeep, pulls out a bunch of tools. Of course. We get this thing towed off the side of the road using the company vehicle. I don't work at NetWizard anymore, so I can say these things. (laughs) I.e., they're a joke, but they're not. Maybe. Who knows? That's for uh, a lawyer to decide. Yeah. And uh, get this thing towed up the road enough, find a shoulder, and we're sitting in this piece of crap for like three hours waiting for the tow truck. The tow truck, by the way, which was a USA tow truck under my right. policy. <laughs> right. Well, you were the one driving. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. <laughs> I called them. I'm like, hey, me and my friends just bought a car. Uh, it's not my car. Can we still get it towed? They're like, are you there? And I'm like, yep. I'm like, yeah, we can get it towed to yeah. your place house. So, uh, yeah, it, which actually saved us because I, I think the original really nice. plan was to get to your house in Ashburn. 
and then figure out how to get it to my house in, in Lovettsville. Um, so they just got straight to the house in Lovettsville. Uh, I'm pretty sure your girlfriend, who's now your ex-girlfriend, was really pissed at you because you missed dinner or something because yeah. we were stuck on the side of the road. It that, all works out for a reason. That tracks. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the, the Cherokee Chief was my first Virginia trail rig. And we got and our money's then, worth out of that thing. And then... Well, yeah. Rip, let's, rip the body let's, off let's, of the cove. Uh, let's kind of. Oh, yeah, we're skipping break, over a couple highlights. Let's let's kind of break down all the accidents that occurred. Uh, okay, they, they weren't accidents. They weren't by really the way. accidents. They were just true adventures. We'll call them near death experiences. So the year I bought the chief was the same year it rained for every big dogs yep. weekend. Mm-hmm. Every weekend it was god awful. It was the worst. If and I remember knows, Virginia red clay is terrible. I remember we we dialed it in. We gave it a tune up. And I remember driving that thing the 35 miles to the cove. First trip, leave the house. It's beautiful weather. Get up over the mountain, pouring rain. Miserable. Mm-hmm. Realize my wipers don't work. <laughs> Pull over to sheets, steal one of the squeegees, and I'm doing 50 <laughs> miles an hour down the highway, squeegeeing my windshield off from the inside. Because the water was leaking in on the inside of the windshield. The outside? The wind was blowing that off. I had to squeegee water off the inside of the windshield while I was driving. (laughs) So then get to the cove, and I realize this thing is so rusty, the road spray soaked all of my camping gear. That's right. I remember that. All of my camping gear. Thankfully, Trevor had a completely compensating tent for like 10 people. Uh, So I, I, I was able to sleep somewhat dry. But then I think the second trip, I sunk it in Lisa's puddle. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there were empty oil containers floating through the back. There's a great video of us rescuing the chief out of the puddle. Hood surfing. Hood surfing to hook up the winch. Um, I'll tell you what, though. That motor always ran pretty good. Because it was a snap-on. You're right. It had that lifetime warranty. (laughs) Uh, And towards the end of that year, I just started kind of doing dumber and dumber and dumber things with it. Mm-hmm. Somebody dared me to go into a rock garden. Mm-hmm. And I to this day, I don't care what anybody says, I you got in. That Jeep. I got in and I got out. Under the own power. Under my own power. No winching, no toes, no stacking rocks, no lockers, in and out by myself. It took a while. Overheated it was, inter- it. It was entertaining. And uh, ripped off a few body mounts that mm-hmm. may or may not have been there to begin with. We're not really sure because they just disintegrated. <laughs> um, and managed to drive that thing home. Best, Only- best drive quality you ever had in it yep. on the I remember. I remember being blown away at why all of a sudden it smelt, smelt, felt really smooth driving down the highway. Uh, and about a week after that trip, not even the day we got home, a week after, I'm mowing the grass around this stupid thing, <laughs> and I realized that I just snapped a leaf spring pack in half, and I drove home on three leaf springs. I'll tell you what, it didn't pull. It wasn't stiff. <laughs> that was the best ride. The last ride was the best ride. So, uh, yeah, we pulled the motor out of it, junked it. Um, I don't even know how many projects we've had since. You had the CJ? That you bought that was in pizzas. Yeah, that the we body have, was also uh, not attached. Yeah, the, the frame stuffed on a corner yeah. over here with uh, the chief motor in it. Uh, no, the chief I motor. Sold I that. sold the motor. I sold the trans. Oh yeah. Uh, I I have a seven hundred R four freshly rebuilt. Oh, what Dana the hell? Three hundred. Oh yeah, you need a no, one no, of those. no, no. Sorry, it's not a seven hundred R four. It's a turbo four hundred, and it it's is. the AMC pattern, so it doesn't fit your yes. motor. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a turbo four hundred three Dana three hundred adapter. I've got the three hundred on the bench. It'll go in something eventually. In I don't know pieces, what. pieces, because all the bearing needles came out. Yeah. <laughs> they go back in eventually. Um, <laughs> yeah, then came the... Uh, and then came the Scrap grand. Heap. Uh, well, yeah, it we'll, wasn't Scrap Heap to start, but it became Scrap Heap. The Scrap Jeep Esquire. Esquire. Uh, again, probably some questionably sketchy things were done. Yeah, like Rubicon Springs. Yeah, yeah. JK front springs, front and rear yep. in the Jeep, mm-hmm. in, in, a, in a 97 Grand Cherokee. Mm-hmm. Works great as a two-inch lift. A um, little soft, but very flexy off-road, in mm-hmm. case anybody's wondering. It's great setup. Ripped a couple shocks off. Uh, well, it started with no shocks. That's so. true. That's true. It so was, when we, it was when we upgraded and put shocks in it and then ripped them out. Yeah. Because they well, certainly were yeah. not long enough. Um, and then, like Tim, decided that defying death 
every six weeks to go four wheeling wasn't really worth it, so I bought a truck and a trailer. <laughs> and uh, great find on the truck, though. Oh yeah, barn find. Yeah, and yeah. that's where that's where I met Brian. Six yep. grand. Yep. And uh, yeah, blown up transfer case. 03, 2500 Duramax. Yep. Everybody knows about Pump Rub. If, if you I don't to, Google I it. I haven't mine yet. I it's, need to. Yeah, <laughs> let's get in line. Yeah. Uh, don't yeah. worry, parts are readily available. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Scrap Heap made it like three solid years of yeah. just endless abuse. Mm-hmm. Anybody who I, tells you... In attempts to physically try and blow up the rear axle. Oh, yeah, yeah. If anybody tells you a Dana 35 is crap... They're correct, but it is possible to beat the to, piss, out to beat the piss out of it to have it outlive the vehicle it's yeah. in, and uh, it's the only surviving piece. Yeah, managed to on more than one occasion break upper control arms mm-hmm. on the front axle, which led to a broken drive shaft, which led to a drive shaft through a transfer case. Um, all the neutral settings. The only thing that was still functioning a hundred percent on that vehicle when it went to the junkyard was the Dana thirty five rear end. What how the four O was that still good? Oh yeah, eh, it was a little low in the oil pressure department, but okay. you know it's it's a four liter. Great, so great dance party on the death. It of, did, yeah. Of scrap heat. again. One day this will be on YouTube, and we will cut to pictures and videos because Said there is dance party. wonderful documentation because of the death. Of scrap what heat. song came on? It was like we turned the radio on, and it was the perfect uh, song. Bruce Springsteen. That's yep. Uh uh oh my god! Why am I blanking on the song? It was so perfect. It was. And, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, there. but yeah, I, I technically made money on that Jeep because I bought it for two hundred dollars and, and scrapped, scrapped it for four hundred because there the catalytic go. converter prices were through the roof. Nice. I had people begging me to buy that thing, which was weird. Um, but yeah, and, and you got this uh, piece of shit. yeah, now now I'm staring at my my YJ. Hey, it runs. It does. It runs. You just somebody's got to hold the battery terminals together, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll get this thing finished up here. It'll be on the trails this year. Yeah. It's a Ford 8.8 rear end, high pinion 30 up front, 35s, 48s, lunchbox lockers front and rear, stretch wheelbase, 5.2 liter V8. Should be a should be a fun little truck. Little ripper. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Trevor, where'd you start? Well, my my car history is a little shorter yeah. than that. My uh, my first car technically was a 2001 Grand Cherokee. And that was fun, Did and and then in uh, in my mom's infinite wisdom, started overheating a little bit, and so she Jeep's took it overheating? to yeah I know Never. right, and uh, so she took it to a mechanic, and this was before we had our friend Scott the mechanic who runs West Springfield Car Care. Um, they told her it was going to be a five thousand dollar repair to replace her radiator and her water pump. Yeah. I, huh? Yeah, exactly. So. I, I, I missed. I'm sorry. On, on an 01? Yep. On a four liter? Yep. Race car? Yeah. Uh, So, needless to say, she went, no way in hell. Scrapped the thing. This was back when Cash for Clunkers was uh, yes. going on. So many people made so much money and ruined such great yeah. cars. So, she ended up getting like 10 grand for the Jeep. Ended up buying a Honda Pilot, and then I went and bought my first car. Was a Subaru Impreza Outback Sport. Ooh, yeah, fancy. Um, hey man, people are into the, like that's an Overlander now. I yeah. know. I was trying to convince Burns to get a, a Forester. He, yeah, like, yeah. Like like the Forester, would, yeah. First car, the, the first car that I ever killed. Um, not in a fun way. It's, motor just blew up, but uh, had that all through college. And then got out of college, started working at the restaurant in Old Town. Motor blew up, so I ended up with a 2008 Volkswagen Jetta, which is a peppy little car. And then once I started working at Enterprise, I worked next to a a Jack Taylor dealership. And found my first Wrangler, and I had always wanted one since I was a little kid. And How long did you have that before I met you? Hmm, that was probably about three months. Oh, really? Yeah, like I had just gotten that. I knew Woody already because his daughter and my sister grew up playing soccer together, and he obviously has his JK. And so he had gone to Big Dogs a couple times just by himself, and he was like, you got to come, it'll be a great time. 
So not my first time off-roading, but first time off-roading in something that I owned, um, which was also my daily driver, so I babied it. But met you and Tom Walk because we were all in the same one through three line. We met because of Max. Yep, we met because of Max. Yep. And, we'll have uh, him as a guest. Lisa, Lisa, that, that Lisa and Chris were, so our, were our guides for that weekend. And then I decided I wanted to lift it. So I brought the lift to your house in Ashburn, and we yep. put the lift on in your driveway after I had put the 35s on there. <sighs> yep. yes. It rubbed like a bitch for about what three What size weeks. tire can I fit without a lift? Oh, the, the classic JK question. <laughs> the answer is a 33, unless it's a uh, JL. No, the answer is... It's, Sawzall. Yeah. Sawzall. <laughs> Any size. They make a DOT 56? Four. 54. Or, or 58. Uh, mm. Somebody looked this up on Mickey Thompson's yeah. website. And, uh, oh, no. 58. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Put they it, are the only company that makes the, currently uh, yeah. a DOT approved 58 inch tire. Yeah. And it is a mud terrain. Yes. Um, yeah. It's some, somebody drop yeah. in the comments 58, yeah. 58, yeah. 54, somewhere around there. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. Um, and then realized there was a little bit more work I wanted to do to it, mainly because, like all JKs, the uh, pegs on the doors decided to get all rusty and swollen. And Tim mentioned that, uh, oh, yeah, I got a buddy. He's got a house in Lovettsville. He works on Jeeps all the time. We'll go there. We'll, we'll do a couple things. All right, cool. Mind you, at the time I was living in Alexandria, so it was about an hour and 20-minute drive out to this place. I had never been to this place called Lovettsville ever before in my life and pull up into a long driveway in the middle of nowhere and uh, I realize Tim's not there and all of a sudden I get out of my Jeep and a head pokes out of the house asking who I am and why the hell I'm in his driveway and that was Tom and uh, once I mentioned that uh, I was Tim's friend and he was running behind per usual Fair, uh, fair, I'll the, take that uh, the Points. deadly machine that was uh, could have ended my life that day was put away, and uh, we started working on Jeeps, and that's yeah. that's kind of how it all started. Yep. And Did then that one, that one uh, buried that one in Lisa's hole too, which is what started the overheating problems, yes. which we tried to correct. The old three point eight. Yeah, and then uh, ended up buying a trail rig off our buddy Greg. It's a eighty seven Comanche. And we used to think that Scrappy was a Franken Jeep yeah. until we started putting this thing together. Well, taking it apart to put it together. Correct. Yeah, yeah it was harder to take apart than it was to put yeah, together. Yeah, true. Because now it's got a... We haven't forgotten, Greg. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's got a small block Chevy in there with a Dana 44 front, Ford 9-inch in the rear, fully built out, 513s. It's it's a monster. Um, 37s. Yeah, 37s on there. About a... Five and a half, six inch lift. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Greg decided to crinkle the body the year that he Meh. was selling it. But that's okay because it's still got all the street cred. So. Eventually, we'll all be on the trails together with all of our square headlight garbage. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, pissing it's off good. so many people it's, with our square headlights. With, with the Baltimore boys. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. We gotta, we, we gotta I get, honestly can't wait to roll up with the Comanche. We got to get shirts. Yeah. yeah. Square head, what, square, <laughs> the square headlight squad. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. But, North and south. We'll be south. Baltimore boys can be north. Fair. Cool guys. Well, I guess we'll uh we'll wrap this one up and then we'll uh come back again next week and talk some more. Yeah. Sounds good. All right guys. Check us out on social media at the dirt drive. Um we're welcome to post every week, so keep up. We'll be here. Yep. See you guys next week.